Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pem Productions, and we're going to do sort of a part two uh, on adding muscles for uh, uh, for characters using the flex modifier. So this is the previous one; it can be found on the YouTube channel, and um, it allowed us to be able to add some uh, flex into the uh, back leg. I've just got it over flexing now to make it really obvious using a secondary object. So let's do it again. We're going to do it for the uh, underneath of the neck here. So we want to get all this fatty, tissuey stuff bouncing around. We've got another trick to uh, to show doing this. So I'm just going to um, uh, pick the uh, poly so that my freeform tools come up and say new object again. And we're just going to call this one neck to be real simple. And again, I've got the uh, um, drawn surface, the body picked, and just a bit of offset. And I'm going to go to my topology tool. And in this case, I'm going to draw a line pretty much down the center because we're going to mirror this over using the symmetry modifier. So I'll just do something rough there. And, and I'll just draw this down. I'll probably have to fix it up a little bit because I miss a few things here and there, I'm sure, as we uh, try and draw this around all the other shapes of the body. But take that one up in there. And then we may as well just do a couple and take it right up into the, into the body here. And I'm going to go and just start creating nice squares. So you want to keep them square pretty much as possible. And I am trying to pay attention to where those squares land a little bit for where these fatty, tissuey bits might be. Just kind of making sure that I'm picking up the high points and the low points. And uh, and that's kind of comes from just practice, knowing where to put things. Oops. I have to delete that one because I went to extend it for some reason. I didn't mean to do that. And I'm going to carry that one in there. I think that's probably pretty good for uh, purposes of this demo. We should even some of these out, so I'm just going to use the Move tool and just move some of these around just to make them a little more even. Again, we want to keep them as square as possible because when we add springs into the Flex modifier, we want that to be fairly even and, uh, and work on a nice even mesh. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to extend this corner out, let's say, and just move these around a bit to... Make it go right to the edge. And I'd say that's pretty good. Let me do that. Okay. Uh, fix the center line, of course. So um, into the edge mode, double click that, and let's go in and align that to X and make sure that we zero it out so that it is completely zeroed. I'm still not liking where the placement of some of these are. They're not straight enough for my liking. We could end up just with odd length springs and the, and the like in, in places. That looks pretty good. So it didn't touch the center line. Don't need to do anything else with it. So I'm going to press X and say symmetry. Add the symmetry. Slice along the airplane off always. Take the weld threshold down to 0 0.01 always. And uh, we've got uh, you know our uh, our flex model here. So I'm just going to collapse that down to an auto editable poly because we don't need it in there. We don't need the uh, uh, symmetry uh, added into it. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is then uh, go and uh, skin wrap modifier and wrap it back off to our character so it moves with it. And we are going to convert that right off the bat to skin and delete skin wrap so that we've got uh, it moving with the body now with our bad animation that we have on the character. I'm going to uh, uh, set this just to see through so I don't have to uh, look at it all the time and then we add the flex modifier on top. So the flex modifier we're going to do same as we did before. You want to lock down the edges and stop them from moving so again this patch should um, sort of extend past where you really need it to uh, 
to work. And grab those and those. And there's the outside edge picked. And of course, we're going to turn off the uh, use weights so that we're not uh, springing based on a center point here. And um, you know, it's now going to probably just go nuts and bounce all over the place and not hold volume at all and just tear off at the edges because it's not respecting edge lengths anything at this time. I'm also going to change it to Runcuda, just a, a higher quality solver. And uh, five might work pretty good for us. Again, the lower it gets, sort of the slower it moves, and the higher it gets, the, the faster it tends to start moving. And then I'm going to skip down to the weights and springs, grab everything, and say enable, options, and hold shape springs. Take the value down to probably, I'm going to guess, 3.8-ish. We'll see what happens. And say add springs. I'm just going to show them. That might be a lot. See, there's a lot of crisscrossing happening there. Let's just remove those and see what happens when we go down a bit lower. And uh, I find kind of some crisscrossing is good, but uh, if it's too many, then um, you can end up with uh, with problems. Now I'm starting to miss some. You can see where there's some springs not coming in here. So we're going to have to go back up to maybe something like that. We're still missing one there. That's good. We're going to have to live with that. That's going to work pretty good. We're missing some springs here. So you can actually correct individual ones. So we could grab these, just those, and uh, and say options, shape, hold shape only, turn it up a bit more. That's still not doing it. And it's still not quite doing it. This is why you want them uh, realistically as square as possible, just to make this sort of thing easier on you. Now when we watch that patch bounce around with the neck, you'll see it's pulling on itself and looking more natural. Now the first thing we also want to do is we want to pay attention to the su suggested strength of uh, 0 0.083. So 0 0.083. And we can play with that up and down a bit, but I suggest always starting there or else you'll find it blowing up on you and doing real nasty things. So there it is bouncing around trying to retain its strength as much as possible. So we can then uh, adjust our strength and our sway to try and um, uh, you know, pull it back in shape. So strength is going to try and pull it back in shape. Sway is going to try and dampen it. It's really not sway. It should be called dampening. And of course, we could also adjust our flex amount. Now, you generally don't want to adjust your flex amount up. You want to try and only go down from one. But now we've got this super flexy, and this will give us just a really good example of what we can get going here. So I am going to skip back over to uh, uh, skin wrap and we're going to add our new muscly bit that we have running and wait for a second as it uh, calculates it. I guess this really isn't so much of a muscly bit but a fatty tissue piece. And with that wrapped in there it should now move but of course you can see it not moving and bouncing and it's because we have set this up with the vertex paint so we've painted in vertex colors if I turn that on you can see the legs white in a couple of muscle areas and it's passing a selection up to volume select and so we're using the vertex color map set to vertex color to be able to create a vertex selection what's being passed to the skin wrap so what we can do now is go in and paint in some color. Now I have used the uh, brush options, turned on my mirror axis here, and we can go in and paint some of these. So what we should do is have a look at where the sort of the fatty bits are the most. And so we've got a high point there, and we've got a high point here. I'll just paint that back in and out. And again, we've got uh, I'm using a tablet, so I've got pressure sensitivity and everything to be able to choose how I'm going to get, what kind of results I'm going to get. And I'm going to paint up along here then as well. And I'm not using full strength um, brush either, so I may not even be hitting full selection value. And uh, I'll just take it down into here a little bit. And we could blur that if we like. Just a bit more 
down into between. There we go. I find using the uh, volume select method for getting the selections passed just better just because um, Oops, it looks like I just collapsed the mesh by mistake. There we go. Um, just because it's a better painting sort of system and painting the selections into the base of the model means that if, uh, um, you know, somebody pulls it out or breaks something, your selections still exist. You could actually use a map as well, which would be uh, totally valid. Uh, the only issue here is if the, you know, model, I guess, changes, you'd have to repaint them, but you'd have to do that with a selection anyways. So I'm just going to turn off the uh, display of the uh, uh, vertex paint. And now you can see that the underneath of the chin is bouncing around all over the place. Now, one of the things that can happen with this, it can just become too unruly. And there's nothing really stopping and holding the uh, bounce from going up and down so much. So I can just maybe show that I'll take some of the uh, sway off. And you can see it's just bouncing wildly out of control. And you can say, well, I want it to be pretty soft and kind of like that, but I want to lock it down more. So let's actually have a bit of fun with this. I'm going to go back down to the edible poly level. And I'm going to go into vertex mode here. And I'm just going to grab a couple of verts, maybe those two, maybe one in between here. Probably didn't hit it quite well. We'll say in between there, in between that one. In between and this is just down the center line in this case one there I'll say one there and this might be a little slow as I do this because it's probably gonna try and recalculate a whole bunch of things I'm going to pull vertices down with the shift held down to copy them just give it a second as it thinks about everything so it's probably recalculating the uh, skin wrap if I turn that off it's better just clone to an element and I have these new vertices now that have been added in here so Back up to our weights and springs, or actually back up to the edge selections first, because we're going to have to reset those. And because the amount of verts has changed, it'll uh, it will have reset itself. So I'm going to go up and just select all those. Select all those. Select those and those. And you can't see those other ones, but I know they're there. So I'm going to go in and select those new vertices that we generated. So those are those new verts. So they're all locked down now. So these ones are locked down too. Back into the weights and springs. And this time I'm going to pick just those new ones. And I'm going to pick their counterparts. on the actual mesh, let's say. Should be pretty good. I may not even have to get those, but and now we'll go to options and maybe well, we'll try 4.6 because it looks like they're about the same as these. Maybe it's going to be a little less. And I'm just going to uh, say options, sorry, hold the shape only. And this, uh, the one selected and say, okay, but it doesn't look like quite enough here. So uh, I'm going to go up a little bit higher. That might be too much. And yeah, it's not going to work with the, uh, we don't have enough of them picked maybe. So I might pick a couple more around just to sort of bounce some of these a bit more. It looks to me like I actually had the wrong ones picked at the front here. So I'm going to go and reset those too. So I've got one either side there. I could even go as much as something like that as a, uh, a triangle around it. And you'll see where I'm going in a second. And I'm going to set more springs. That yeah, looks pretty good. Get some nice crisscrossing happening there. And let's just fix this one at the beginning here that I mistakenly did. So I'm going to grab those ones. Say remove. So I'm going to have to remove from couple and then I want to pick these two that float again make sure I get the right ones this time probably that one that one 
could even go out as far as that if I wanted something like that. Say add, see what I get. And let's add that and that to it as well. And that should be pretty good. So what's happening now is those are going to be held down because we've locked them into place. And those ones won't move quite as much. And I'll be trying to pull it back in. So you can see them actually not springing and trying to pull the shape back together again around it. So you can actually help pull it together and keep it together. It looks like I need, definitely need more, uh, um, need more dampening there. I should also pay attention to my uh, um, suggested strength. It's looking like it's saying 6.3 now. So I'm just going to take these back down to 6.3 so I don't get any meshes kind of blowing up on me and doing anything crazy. And now we can see doing this really nice jiggly, bouncy stuff. And again, those lockdowns won't let it go up and in too far, but it'll still bounce down a fair bit. So there's a, there's a really cool way of um, kind of getting jiggly bits going. Uh, again, so that it's uh, it's separated from the mesh. You're not working directly on the mesh. The mesh can change easily, to, easy to bind back to your muscle bits, and uh, get that set up. Let me just play that back, not in real time, so that it uh, plays, and we can see it uh, jiggle around really nice and be able to uh, give us a little bit of soft, gooey bits. And because I was able to paint the soft selections, it's nice because I get nice overlaps on the bits you know only the softest bits um, bounce around as they should so there's a tutorial too on how to add uh, flex for characters